So, dear friends, if you will please turn again to that portion of Scripture, Psalm 8, Psalm 8, please, third verse, When I consider thy heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? My dear friends, we fall to wondering, why should God love a wretch like me? What is this love, and how ill I have requited this love all these years? Yes, we have to come to ourselves at some point, you know. You have, we have to face home truths. There is no getting away from home truths. Oh, however much we dislike them, but these are home truths. Now, in the 15th chapter of Luke, you see this love in action. Fifteen chapter of Luke. Fourth verse, please. What man of for you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost? until he find it. And when he has found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I have found him. And I thought he was just lost, lost. You know, my dear friends, when I saw the piles of baggage, luggage of baggage, in London Airport, one of the terminals, you know, I thought, shall I go? scouting up along this huge pile to see if somewhere my suitcase can be found. My wife said to me, No, that's not possible. It appears they have had difficulties uh, over baggage, and you know how just with so many travelers out of London, my, it's, it comes to millions of pieces of baggage. Well, 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 how to find such baggage? Anyway, you say it's lost, it's gone, irretrievable, it's, the matter is closed, the chapter is over, forget it. Now, God never says that. God should have said that about me. God could have said that about me. And what shall I say? How wonderful that he did not say that of me. I say, you know, my own classmates and my friends, my sports buddies who played games with me. Hey, they, some of them were such excellent fellows in comparison. I could see what sterling fellows they were. And yet, should God care for me? Should God retrieve me? 
pick me out of the mire and give to me a life with some meaning and purpose. You know, it would have broken my heart if I woke up one day in my fifties and said, hey, I've been beating about the bushes. I've been fighting the air. Now, what have I been doing with my life? And should God care for me like this and love me like this, and yet this is the way I spent my days? My dear friends, if there were not a goal and a purpose placed before me, by the love of the cross. I might tell you, I would have lived a most frustrated and bitter. You know, it's terrible to be bitter, you know. Life that anybody could have lived. But the Lord saved me from that kind of bitterness and that kind of total failure. And so Jesus says, if even if it is just one, one, one lost sheep, I'll go after it till I find it. How amazing, how amazing. I've seen this happen again and again, and sometimes when I look upon the audience and I can discern how unique are the cases of people seated in front, saved from the brink of the grave, people who should have been long dead 30, 40 years ago, with chronic diseases which doctors and hospitals could not handle. Places, people who had attempted suicide over and over. And when I look at their faces and say, how did the Lord find this fellow? How did the Lord find this girl so proud? so empty-headed, so arrogant. And you know, my dear friends, if you want me to name some of these afflictions, some people die of self-pity. You can't do a thing for them. Self-pity is not repentance. It is a kind of something between remorse and self-justification. Well, there was nothing I could do about it, so I succumbed to this temptation. Don't we see that all these temptations are common to us all? The Bible says so. But the Bible also says God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But with the temptation, he will give you a door of escape. You know, if somebody should push me against that bare wall and this ruffian had me by the neck and just got me right against that stone wall. And if a door just opened and someone received me into his arms, my dear friends, wouldn't I be amazed? 
when I found that there was no way of escape from that terrorist or from that ruffian or whoever, and I found loving hands receiving me through the wall. Yes, that's how Jesus is. Through the wall, a door of escape. And so the Lord Jesus Christ told us about these two boys. One who had squandered everything. He had squandered everything. He had spent it with riotous living with harlots. My, I remember the day some forty years ago as somebody was driving me into Detroit. One day, he said to me as the downtown high high-rise buildings were coming in to view, he said, you know, I was a part of that wickedness that went on there. You could buy a girl for five dollars. Well, for a young man like me at that time, speaking in various places in parts of the U.S. It was shocking to hear someone say, I was a part of the wickedness that went on there. But he was a very different fellow when I met him. Completely transformed. My dear friends, I do not know how many of you are in daily touch with situations which seem to be irretrievable. I don't like to give up anything as and call it ir irretrievable. You know, in my tennis games, I was known as one who would just not give up on impossible balls. You know, I would make a supreme effort and get it over the net. And when I see my Lord, he doesn't call anything lost. Is So, when I see this young man returning to the Father, I will arise. My dear friends, when did you lose that I will? When did you lose that part of you which says this nail should be hit on the head and not elsewhere? I can't miss the head by an inch or two. I've got to drive this nail in, which means I hit it on its head. You mean to say you have lost that? You know, I, as I play table tennis still, I like to get my flick or my ball where the fellow can't touch it. That's the game, you see. And the day in which I lose that power of placing my ball exactly where I want it, then I have lost it. You know, there is, in the extreme situations of life, there is an I will arise and go to my father. Never lose that. Let it come right into your heart. I will. Not that my will is going to do everything, but where am I talking? What am I talking about? I will go to my father. 
you know, this is what was very disappointing to me, that in an important game, you know, in a competitive match or game, uh, I could get my will functioning, get the ball into the goal, or get the ball where it can be shot in. I could function in a game, but when it came to temptation, I collapsed. I couldn't function. And I said, this will not do. So, when eventually I said, I will go to my father, it was done. It was done. I will go to my father. And how did the father mean, meet him? Hey, son, at long last you thought about coming back to me? After squandering all my wealth and making my name to be dragged in the sewers? This is when you came to yourself, did you? Okay then, maybe you will take that last seat down the hallway at my table. No, the father fell on his neck and kissed him as though he was the most precious thing that he could ever collect into his arms. Fell on his neck and kissed him. And he said, bring the ring, bring the ring, the authority of sonship. Put it on him. Bring the best robe. Now let him be girded with the right kind of shoes. There is a work for him to do. Even his shoes should be the right ones. My dear friends, how helpless we feel when we are stricken in our feet. You know, when I, I have a bout of gout, my, I feel stumped. And it hits me generally in my ankles or toes. Very painful. And I say, Lord, take this away. Because I can't function. I can't even put on my shoes because of the swelling. You know, the devil hits you on your feet so that you don't, you can't take the message to others. How terrible. You see, if all the people who went to the bridge in Minneapolis stood around as spectators and nobody ventured into the waters or ran up some of those ramps, and said, hey, I'm going to pull them out of the water. I'm going to rescue these dying people. If they had no feet to all their nice looks. You know, sometimes we specialize in looks only. There's no feet to it. There's no truth to it. Nothing to it. Just the looks. Nice church people, or something like that. They have the looks and nothing to it. No, he wanted his son back fully functional, getting the job done, getting to the lost, lifting them and retrieving the irretrievable. That's the father. That's the father. That is his love. That's the cross of Jesus. That is his love. What is man? That you are mindful of him. Or the son of man that you visit him. Let us pray. Loving Father, what is man? What is man? Strutting around for a fleeting moment. 
Talking big. Pure hot air. And resisting your love. What is man? We come to you. Help us, Lord, to yield to that love. To seek you with all our hearts. Because you are seeking us. Oh Lord, we thank you again that you died in our place to pay the ransom for a wretch like me. We thank you. So bless these dear people, every one of them, the boys and the girls, the children, so help us to get into irretrievable situations and see that the cross of Jesus, the love of Jesus prevails. So help us in Jesus' holy name. Amen.